Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 sim pilots and today as you guessed we are going to talk about the different lights on the Airbus what they mean what they are used for and when uh, we will actually operate them we're back in Microsoft Flight Simulator but of course uh, as with the taxi tutorial this is pretty applicable to um, any Airbus simulator that you're using at home as ever this is not for any real world use it's just for our use in our flight simulator of choice at home and uh, hopefully it gives you some extra context to your home simulations. For this video I will be using the A320 Neo mod by Flybywire, the link will be in the description. Uh, this is one of the unstable builds but uh, hopefully by the time this video is out it's probably been made into a, a stable build and I'll be doing a video on uh, all of those little updates. So if you notice some things in the video today that don't work in your simulator at home it's because I have that mod installed. Uh, like I said, I highly recommend that mod if you're going to be using the Airbus in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It uh, adds a lot to the to the simulation. We're here on stand in uh, Bergen in Norway today. The aircraft is pretty much set up for a flight over to Glasgow. And let's talk about what sort of lighting we can expect to need to use for this flight. The sun is just setting, as you can see, so uh, we know it's going to be a night flight. First of all, let's start by taking a look at these navigation lights. That's what these are called. There's a green one on the right hand wing, a red one on the left hand wing and a white one on the tail. These are primarily used to show other aircraft the direction we're traveling uh, and our orientation. They also help just highlight us in the sky at night. They're surprisingly visible even though they don't look that bright. Um, and you can see there's two bulbs here. In the real aircraft, if you have two bulbs fitted, only one will be running at a time. And I'll talk more about that later using the switches. Uh, but the idea is that you have a spare bulb which you can switch to on a different system if you need to. These are um, typically turned on as long as the aircraft is powered. So most people out of routine will use them when the aircraft is powered. However, that's not in Europe the rule. In daylight, you don't need them on. So for a flight in the daylight, you do not need the navigation lights. But it's very common to see them on when the aircraft is powered. Um, but like I say, not an absolute rule. So there's a green one on the right hand wing, a white one on the tail. And normally only one of those would be lit, like I say. And then we have a red one over here on the left hand wing. These lights typically, or no, not typically, they do show uh, from straight in front of the aircraft, but they don't show from the opposite side. So I can see it from straight in front and then all the way around until slightly behind the wing. And that is designed so that other aircraft can see us and orientate us, but not get confused. So you won't end up, say we're above this aircraft, I can't see the green navigation light. And that's all designed for a reason, to make sure that uh, it's obvious at night which way we're travelling. And I'll talk more about that later. In the cockpit now, and the switch for the navigation lights is here in the external lighting panel. You have nav and logo on and off. And in some aircraft you'll have uh, a second position, so there'll be position 1 and 2, which would give you the option to use uh, system 1 or 2, which will have the different bowls which I talked about earlier. But in this aircraft we just have on, and there are aircraft out there with only one position on or off. So that's fine, we have that set to on. You'll notice it's also called nav and logo light. So what does logo mean? Well let's have another look outside. By moving the time on a bit you can see here what the logo light does. They are fitted into the tail, the, the rear stabilizer on the aircraft, and they point up at the fin to highlight the uh, airline or company's logo on the fin. There's one on each side obviously which light up and they will be on typically when the landing gear is compressed. So when the aircraft is on the ground or uh, in some aircraft when the flaps and slats uh, are out in, in different configurations. But essentially when it's near or on the ground is when that will be lit. Because there's no point having it lit up in the cruise. There's no one around to see it. But that's what the logo light does. So that's attached to the nav light switch and we don't have much to do with it. We just turn it on when we get to the airplane. Uh, as we do our walk around, we will check carefully to make sure that these navigation lights are working. And by a walk around, I mean we'll do a visual exterior inspection of the aircraft before every flight. And that would include checking that these uh, nav lights are working because these are required to be working before we can go flying at night. Um, so yeah, they will just be left on for the whole flight now. So once they're on when you get to the aircraft and typically when you power it up, uh, you'll just end up leaving them on. So that's that done quite easy quite simple let's move on to the beacon the beacon switch and the flight deck is again on the external lights panel it's called beacon on and off and it only has two positions this is used to turn on the red beacon the flashing red light on the top and bottom of the aircraft and you'll see this on uh, i think nearly every commercial jetliner so i'm going to turn it on now and then show you on the outside uh, what it actually is 
So here it is on the top of the aircraft. There's two beacons, one on the top and one on the bottom. And this serves to show that the aircraft is getting ready to start up. So we don't turn on the beacon until the ground crew are ready for us um, to do so. Because what it signifies is the aircraft is uh, about to start engines or move. Um, so it's always turned on before you start engines. Typically just after you get clearance from air traffic control for push and start. There's one on the top and then there's another one on the bottom. And as you can see, if you were a ground crew standing near the nose wheel or maybe you were taking out chocks and you, uh, you weren't aware the aircraft was about to start up, this beacon will come on and it's very visible, very bright and very important and then you'll get away from the aircraft. So it's, uh, it's, it's a very important light and must be put on at the right time and must be turned off at the right time. Because when you come to park at the other end, uh, the ground crew won't come near the aircraft until they see that stop and then they'll know the engines are spooling down. Because it's quite hard, you know, when the engines are spinning at low power or high power or just as they're sort of turning off, the fan will be spinning so it's hard to tell whether they're, they're actually on and producing thrust or not at, at least for a few seconds. So beacon, very important. So that'll be on for the rest of the flight now until we turn off the engines and we won't turn it off until the engines have spooled down to a slow enough speed that it's safe for people to be near the aircraft and the engines. If this is broken, it's very important. Uh, you have to have other ways to communicate with the ground crew because it's uh, very dangerous. If you were to park on stand with this light broken, the ground crew may think the engines are off before they actually are and therefore approach the aircraft. So yeah, very important uh, light and that's why it's so bright and there's, there's two of them very visible. Something to note as well, you see this orange flashing light. This is something that you'll find on all moving airport vehicles, these rotating orange beacons. So even if you see sort of normal road cars, they, uh, they'll typically, or they will have to have a flashing rotating orange light on top um, in order to signify that they are a moving vehicle on the airport. whilst we're starting engines here. Um, something I wanted to talk about uh, and I have talked about in a previous video is that uh, in the flight deck we'll have the lights on bright at this point in order to be able to communicate and use hand signals with the ground crew down below so that they can see what we're doing um, if we're traveling around at night. So that's, uh, that's one of the reasons we'll have the, the lights on nice and bright up here in the flight deck uh, at this time. We won't use any of the nose lights because they're far too bright for the ground crew and we don't use them even to get attention of the ground crew typically because they are completely dazzling and they'll, they are incredibly bright and they're not safe to be shone at people, especially as they are um, down here at eye height of uh, people. The engines have started, we've got our flaps at one for takeoff and uh, we can call up for taxi. Now at this point we will uh, dim the lights in the flight deck typically, so we'll put the dome lights to uh, dim. The dome light is of course being controlled over here on the um, interior lighting panel and that's this panel here interior lights in light. Now this has this dial here and I'm going to talk about more of these other uh, internal lighting switches in flight um, but just for now we have the overhead lighting which controls the integral lighting which is all these backlights on these space here. Ice and D standby compass I'll talk about later. Seat belts are obviously on and they should be in auto. The emergency exit lights are armed and we have enunciated lights, bright, dim and test. So here we would leave them in uh, probably dim. Now I'm going to turn the dome light. You have three positions, bright, dim and off. The dome light is the only light that will be powered by batteries in terms of the internal lights. So if you have any sort of emergency on takeoff that means a loss of electrical power, it's useful to have this already set to dim. So at night, a lot of people will have this set to dim for takeoff. So that's what I've got now. Now let's talk about the external lights. Before we taxi, I want to come down onto the external lights and I'm going to turn on the nose uh, light to taxi. As we said, we don't want to blind the crew outside, but they're now away from the aircraft. So this goes one click up from off to taxi. This is a light on the nose wheel. It does not turn, it always points straight ahead on the nose of the airplane. So even when the nose wheel is turning, this will end up pointing straight ahead. Uh, and I'll show it to you now. So here we are, this is the uh, taxi light. It is fitted to the top of the nose gear. It points straight ahead only, um, and it is, uh, it's is—it's very good. It's very bright. On Neo aircraft, it's typically an LED, so it's much whiter than it used to be. It used to be a more yellow sort of filament bulb style, but it is incredibly bright. As you can imagine, you do not want to turn this on if there was a ground person standing right here, because it would be very dazzling. It only points straight ahead. 
So on some airliners, they'll actually attach the taxi light down onto this part of the nose wheel so that when this turns, uh, the light turns around the corner and you can see where you're pointing the nose wheel. It doesn't work like that on the Airbus, so we have to do that ourselves. How can we do that? We can use these two lights. These are called the runway turnoff lights. Back on our interior panel here, and as you can see, we set the nose lights to taxi, and on the other side, we have runway turnoff. I'm going to turn these on. They have come on, and they now light up these two patches either side of the flight deck um, and that is much more useful for taxiing around. It also means that we're more visible from the sides because there's a light pointing at a, a wider angle around us. There is one more bulb on the nose wheel, it's got quite a few attached to it, which is this bulb here. This is the takeoff light which I'll talk about as we go and enter the runway. These nose gear lights actually um, will all turn off automatically if you leave them on so as you take off they uh, as the nose wheel comes up they turn off on their own um, the Airbus has a system for that so that's quite useful but we still turn them off uh, as routine at some point later on in the cleanup after takeoff so this is a pretty typical taxi configuration as a summary we have got our beacon on our navigation lights on which also include the logo lights just by uh, default we've got the taxi light on we've got the runway turnoff lights on and uh, and that is about it if you need help understanding the lightings outside I do have a video on uh, taxiing and talking through different signings and markings on the ground uh, externally uh, as you can see these blue lights signify the edges of the taxiway it's important to note that these lighting setups don't change at night or in the daylight. Aside from the navigation lights, the red, green and tail light, which may be off during the daylight but usually are left uh, on, um, at night or daytime we will still use the beacon, we will still use the nose gear lights and we'll still use the, uh, the lights that I'm about to show you as we line up and take off because these lights are incredibly bright and they still serve their purpose uh, during the day. As you can see, um, it is still possible to see on the top of the fuselage that beacon flashing, the ground crew still use it. Um, and we still turn on those taxi lights in order to make sure we are visible and other aircraft. Um, it certainly helps them know that we are about to be taxiing around. So now before we can line up on the runway as we are ready to take off and once we've got clearance from air traffic control we still want to make ourselves as visible as possible so we're going to turn on the strobe lights. These would have been left in the auto position which is there, auto in the middle. That's where they'll be from uh, the moment you get on the airplane really all the way through until now as you're about to enter the runway. In the auto position these are the strobe lights will come on when you get into the air um, which we'll talk about when we, when we get airborne but effectively they are located on the wings and the tail so they're in the same places as the nav lights pretty much um, but they will uh, come on in auto when the landing gear is extended so when it knows you're in flight but we're going to turn them on as we get onto the runway so anyone on approach will see us coming early as you can see these uh, strobe lights make a big difference to the visibility of the aircraft they are here on the right wing, here on the left wing and one on the tail as well. They are otherwise known as anti-collision lights. Anti-collision lights. So they're designed to make you very visible to other aircraft in the area. Um, so they make a big difference. And they also show other aircraft around, say for example someone on final approach, that you are about to be entering the runway. If you were crossing the runway during taxi, they'd typically be turned on for that as well, just to give everyone a chance. The other advantage they have over taxi and landing lights and even nav lights is that they're visible from all around, uh, so from the back and the front. Um, although this one looks a little bit dim to me, the one on the tail is, 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 is as bright as the others, but these wing ones are really good. They are, they are very bright. You don't want them on during taxi because they're distracting to other pilots um, and they are incredibly bright. So let's get ourselves onto the runway. We have some more lights we can turn on as well before we do that. We've also got underneath the landing lights which are currently tucked away as you can see they are sitting flat with the wing you cannot see them here uh, so let's extend those back on our overhead panel uh, external lights we have land and they are currently in retract so they are flush with the wing they are folded away I'm going to turn the left one to off and then the right one is going to go on in the off position they will extend but not turn on 
in the on position they will turn on uh, once extended. Let's jump back outside and take a look and now you can see the uh, same position that light is uh, blinding us there um, and that is extended into the airflow if I bring the camera around you can see and shining forwards I'll just make it daylight a bit to give you um, a clear picture of that light there you go fold out into the airflow this is done from now typically to 10,000 feet um, you'll have them on so you don't need them on when taxiing they're too bright um, we fold them away and also when you get above 10,000 feet the aircraft will accelerate and because they're out in the airflow, you'll feel the rumble in the cabin and they provide a little bit of drag. So uh, we turn them off as we accelerate above 250 knots, typically. They don't have to be on below 10,000 feet, but that's a pretty common practice thing to do. So that one is on. If you go to the other side, it is um, in the uh, off position. So that means it is sitting out in the airflow. It is not turned on. There's not many cases where you'll need to use this. Some people put them in this position until they're cleared for takeoff. Um, but that's just some people I don't do that personally I'll just turn them on um, like this finally on the nose gear we have one more light the, the brightest one on the nose gear is going to be our takeoff light which is this bulb here it shines further ahead down the runway than the taxi light does and it's just a bit brighter so we'll turn our other landing light on we'll put the nose light from taxi to takeoff and there you go now we are fully lit up this is the airplane in its pretty much most lit configuration. We've got all the nose lights on. We've got the taxi and the takeoff light shining away ahead of us. We've got the uh, landing lights, uh, which are these two here, left and right, shining down below us. And we've got the strobe lights, nav lights, beacon. Everything's pretty much on. So we are as lit up as we can be as we enter the runway for our departure. Once we're in the climb and we've retracted the landing gear, brought the flaps to zero, we then disarm the ground spoilers because they're in case of a rejected takeoff and we'll turn off the runway turn off lights and the nose lights. As I said earlier, these will both turn off automatically, but we still turn the switches off once we've retracted the flaps to zero and disarmed the ground spoilers. We've now passed through 10,000 feet and we're accelerating, so as I said earlier, we're now going to turn off the landing lights because they're out in the airflow and they'll cause a rumbling noise and drag and they're not much use up here. We leave on the strobe lights, we leave on the beacon and we leave on the nav lights because we're getting into night time. Typically about 10,000 feet, seatbelt signs can go off as well, that's usually what happens. So here we are. So let's talk about setting up the flight deck lighting for ourselves. I'm just going to wind the altitude up for our cruise. Flight level 300 to start with. Let's go uh, 320 for now. So we have loads and loads of switches for controlling the lighting in the flight deck. Let's start off down here. We have floodlight and integral lights. So I'm going to turn off the dome light to make this a bit more obvious. So the dome light's now off, so the lighting is coming from these switches. Floodlights are these lights here that point down uh, onto the instrument panel. They can be quite bright. I'm not a huge fan of them. I tend to leave them on one of the dimmer settings so they're just about visible because I find that they mostly light up stuff that I don't need lit up. They do light up this panel in case you need that uh, which is useful to have. We then have, if I turn that off, you can see the integral lights. So that is the backlighting for all the text in the MCDUs and the uh, PFD controls over here. So that's what these two switches do. On the right, we have the floodlight. This one controls this lamp up here, pointing down on the center pedestal. Rarely used, if at all, often left completely off. Um, it doesn't serve much purpose. Right. A lot of people ask me how do they, what well, they can't see the FCU or this display up here for the autopilot. How do they do that? That's with these little dials underneath. These rotate so they light up the backlighting for the displays and this one does the integral lighting up here so we want that on obviously we can control the brightness of the pfds obviously but these aren't used for lighting and the navigation display we have a switch here called console floor that one lights up some lights underneath the seat and in this area as well as some lights down here so you can see into your cubby hole here where you may have documents or your food or whatever also on the real aircraft this light here uh, increases the brightness of this 
light strip, which you can't quite see. That shines down onto the tray table, but that's not modeled because the tray table doesn't work yet. So, Although you can see it lighting up down here slightly, I think. So maybe it is modeled, but the, uh, the tray table isn't. But that's what that's for, so you can see your, what you're writing, things like that. As we go onto the overhead panel, we have a whole load of interior lights. So let's have a look at those. On the overhead panel now, in the interior lighting, which is just to the right of exterior lighting, we have our seatbelt sign, which as I said, would typically be on uh, until 10,000 feet, depends on the airline procedure. We have integral lights for the overhead panel, just like the other panels. We've got the dome light, which we've already discussed, set to dim or bright or off. Uh, we've got enunciator lights. This will adjust how bright these other lights appear so if I turn off the pack, you see that bright white off. That set to bright, just how bright it appears, and set to dim, it should be dimmer, although it's not modelled. It would also work for things like the landing gear enunciators and a few others. So if I was to set that to medium, that would be either bright or dim. Um, so it lowers the brightness of some of those. So it's quite useful. It doesn't seem to be modelled yet. Test is going to light up everything. and You can get an idea if there's any bulbs failed or things like that. So that's useful if you've think that something should be lit and you're confused as to why it isn't either the system isn't working right or maybe it's just the bulb is broken so you have the test option there as well down here we have emergency exit lights which would uh, leave an arm and obviously no uh, no smoking sign which is left in auto typically for the uh, the whole duration of the flight we have this switch here ice indicator and standby compass so let's have a look at what that does well the standby compass comes down here you can't see it, it's not modelled yet in this uh, mod, but that will come down and it has a little bulb in it and it's just a pure uh, normal magnetic compass. And with the light on, you can see it in the dark, that's what it's for. We also have a little ice indicator probe on the outside of the aircraft. So I've moved over to the right here. Um, you can see it here, it sticks out into the airflow. This has a little light inside of it. So when you turn on the ice indicator light up here and the standby compass, then it lights up on the real aircraft and that helps you see if there's any ice on it. We use this uh, little probe, we just look at it and if ice has formed on it we can assume that ice has formed on the other surfaces of the aircraft on the leading edges so we'll need to turn on the wing anti-ice. In icing conditions of course we would have already turned on the engine anti-ice. So the light is just there so that at night you can uh, see if ice has built up on it. It's not a very good light and it can be quite hard to tell sometimes. So this is how you would expect to have it in flight typically. As I said, the landing light should be in retract, uh, runway turn offs off, uh, nose lights off, strobes on, beacon on, nav and light on. The final switch we haven't discussed is the wing. It's typically off, but we can turn it on. Um, and that, as I can show you now, is called the wing ice light in uh, the game, which is pretty accurate. That lights up the leading edge of the wing, and that is done from a little bulb just here. So, what I'm going to do is again set it to nighttime. I think it's great that we can do so quickly and now you can see the wings are lit up the idea is they point backwards onto those wings the idea is we can then look at the leading edge so as well as our little probe on the nose we can look at the leading edge from the flight deck and see if ice is built up it also could help increase visibility on the ground for example if you were in low visibility procedures they're just some more lights however for the purpose of checking for ice you can see on the 319 and 320 the wing and that this little area would be a bit more lit up in a 321 you can't actually see the wing from the flight deck enough for that to be useful so it's not used very often but that's what that uh, switch is for so typically that'll be left off as you can see now the wings are no longer lit up so this is a typical exterior look at what plane looks like during the cruise so not as lit up we've lost a few of the lights um, we don't have the landing lights we don't have the uh, nose or taxi lights and we don't have the wing lights however if I now move away as you'll see and this is pretty accurate actually it's quite obvious out here that I'm looking at a green nav light and the, the anti-collision strobe lights make it quite obvious so the strobe lights draw your eyes to the aircraft and then the green light gives away the fact that that aircraft is uh, passing down my right. So if I'm flying along forwards towards the moon, I can see the green light, so I know that aircraft is coming towards me uh, on my right-hand side. I know I'm looking at the right of the aircraft. If I see it like this, I know uh, it's heading, pointing right at me. 
And if I see it on this side, I know it's probably passing down on my left hand side because I can see the red nav light. They are just useful for giving an orientation. If I see an aircraft like that and I just have the red in front of me, then I know that it's not coming towards me, it's probably going across. Things like that. It, it just gives you a better situational awareness of the other aircraft. And you can see those nav lights for an astonishingly uh, long distance away. It's, they are, yeah, really, really amazing. So the system does work. <laughs> um, there you go. Finally then, I want to just show you how we might set up the flight deck in the cruise like this. It's not common to sit in the dark. We might sit like this, especially uh, at top of descent as we're preparing to go in and land. But quite often, have the dome light set to dim at night just to give our, our eyes a chance and we can read a bit more easily if we're trying to work out flight plans, things like that, or if you're trying to eat or anything. However, it is nice in the dark. You can see the stars better. Your eyes get used to it. Although a lot of these instruments actually reflect off some of these screens, so it's not the perfect viewing deck for stars, as you might imagine. We would also, as we go into our descent, typically turn off that light, as I said, to off and uh, sit in a situation more like this. Perhaps, uh, as I said earlier, some people like these floodlights to be on. On final approach at night, this would be a typical sort of view. Have the dome light off and the, uh, the floodlights on like this. Obviously, as we descend below 10,000 feet, we're going to turn the landing lights back on. Uh, and that's the only change we'll make until we put the gear out. When we put the gear down again on approach, we're going to arm the speed brakes for the landing and then turn on the nose wheel lights again. But this time, runway turnoffs on, nose to taxi. We don't set it to take off. We can just set it to taxi for landing. That's what it needs to be at. The final step after you've landed, um, and it's basically the reverse of what we did when we took off. Um, once you've landed, you're going to turn off the landing lights. You're going to turn the strobe light to auto and you're going to be taxiing around using the runway turnoff and the taxi lights. You're then going to park up and only when the engines have spooled down, typically N1 blows sort of 10% or something reasonable, depends on the airline, you can turn the beacon off so the ground crew know to approach the aircraft. And that would pretty much be it. So a sort of reverse about how we've done it now. That's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been uh, of interest for you. There'll be more tutorials and videos to come on the channel in both uh, x and Microsoft Flight Simulator, as well as uh, some more upcoming live streams uh, flying a few different aircraft. Um, so do stay tuned to the channel, uh, subscribe and uh, set the notification bell to on if you'd like to be notified of those events. I've also got some more group flights to come. Uh, where I will put up a community post before so that uh, people have a chance to find out when they are and to join. As always, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again in another video soon. Bye-bye.